In the 2007 NBA Draft, Yi Jianlian was selected 6th overall by the Milwaukee Bucks. He was supposed to be the next big Chinese superstar in the NBA, following Yao Ming. But obviously, he didn't end up like that. I'm not saying he couldn't play or anything, he just didn't quite pan out in the NBA like we all thought he would. But none of that matters because he's mostly known for what he did before he got drafted. Apparently, there was a pre-draft workout tape in which Yi supposedly played one-on-one -on -one against none other than a chair. I guess he chose a chair to showcase his skills against instead of an actual workout partner before getting drafted. The thing is though, the footage of the chair workout has mysteriously vanished. The video is nowhere to be found. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, who cares? I mean, after all, it's just a video showing Yi going one-on-one -on -one against a chair. Well, yeah, while on paper it sounds pretty dumb, it's just the fact that many claim to have seen the footage before he was drafted, but since then, it's been having those same people accept the fact that maybe it was all just a part of their imagination. I found some interesting comments on Reddit talking about this. One post asked the question, what is the worst pre-draft workout video you've seen? And one user said, it's gotta be the Yi Jianlian in the chair. In case no one has heard, he did his whole draft workout video against a chair. And the crazy part is, there was a bunch of people on the side. He could have easily grabbed one of them and used them. Or I'm sure he had a trainer or just any friend in general who could have helped him. But no, he chooses a chair instead. Don't go searching YouTube for this video. Unfortunately, it is absolutely nowhere to be found anymore. Rumor has it that Yi had the Chinese government delete it from everywhere. Which raises the question, was Yi so embarrassed by this that he demanded the footage to be erased? This mystery seems to really intrigue Bill Simmons in particular, who claimed that he first saw the clip during the broadcast of the 2007 NBA Draft Lottery, and he occasionally mentions it on his various podcasts. He's kinda, dare I say, obsessed with this phenomenon. I mean, you would be too if you swore up and down that you saw footage of something with your own two eyes, only to have some people call you crazy saying, sorry, it never happened actually happened. I bet that would drive you insane. Even Celtics GM Danny Ainge had mentioned something about a chair in one of his interviews regarding Yi and the pre-draft workout. But again, no evidence seems to exist of it. Unless you want to consider this picture of Yi featuring a chair in the background as partial evidence. Of course, there are several videos of Yi working out alone, but no clip involving a chair. Now, there is one reporter who claims he was actually there to see it live. Chris Mannix of The Vertical confirmed that Yi did indeed run drills around a chair. Mannix explained that it didn't quite make sense for Yi to work out against collegiate players who were more advanced in their development. So, he conducted a solo workout that involved a folding chair. Now, we can choose to believe him, but for many, it's hard when there is no proof. I don't know about you guys, but I find this whole thing pretty fascinating in my opinion. I certainly did everything I possibly could to find the footage, but obviously was unsuccessful. So I guess that chair workout really is a false memory. On December 6, 2010, LeBron James and Dwayne Wade made one of the greatest photos in NBA history. And for years, it seemed like almost everyone thought that this shot was the result of a D-Wade alley-oop to LeBron. But surprisingly, that isn't the case. It was actually the result of a fast break pass from D-Wade, which had many minds completely blown. We were believing in a lie all along. Even the writers of the new Space Jam movie couldn't get their memory right when trying to pay homage to this play. They too mistaken the D-Wade bounce pass to LeBron for an alley-oop. And LeBron himself didn't seem to go out of his way to correct them. Maybe because he also forgot. But don't feel too bad if you're one of those people who remembered this play differently. Because believe it or not, Mario Chalmers looks to have also fallen victim to the Mandela effect. 
We all can see that it started off with a defensive rebound, which eventually led to the finish. But apparently, Mario's memory recalls something entirely different. Dwayne Wade wants LeBron James to sign a copy of this photo. Wade made the pass, LeBron made the dunk. In the 2010 season, teammate Mario Chalmers commented, saying the play comes off one of his steals. We found the play at Milwaukee. Starts off a rebound by Wade. The dish back to LeBron for the slam. Chalmers not even on the court. There he is standing next to the bench. Not only was there no steal involved, but Chalmers wasn't even on the floor during that play. So either he was busted for lying, trying to take partial credit for the iconic play, or he really did fall victim to the Mandela effect. Okay, so I know I've talked about this 1996 Slam Magazine in a video not too long ago, but I still feel like it's worthy of mentioning in this video as well. I originally talked about this in a video titled, Things NBA Fans Have Always Wondered About, basically pointing out the fact that for some reason, Allen Iverson was not on this cover despite being the number one pick in that draft class. This picture looks good and it's dope, but it's just something wrong with the picture. You're staring at it looking for Waldo, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're looking at it and then you're like, yo, where's AI at? I don't know. I expected you guys to say, oh yeah, I have always wondered why Iverson was not on that cover. But instead, the comments that poured in were about how you guys always thought AI was on the cover. Like this comment, quote, Honestly, the 1996 draft picture is a Mandela effect for me. Iverson is my favorite player of all time, and I never realized he wasn't in the picture. I specifically remember seeing him in the picture with an afro, which doesn't even make sense because he did not have an afro yet and many more comments that were just like that. I was kind of surprised by how many of you guys seemed genuinely shocked by this, which got me curious. What category do you fall in? Were you always aware that AI was never on the cover? Or did the Mandela effect happen to get to you? I don't know about you guys, but I discovered that I've been kinda living a lie when I revisited the game winner Luka had versus the Clippers in the bubble. Back to Doncic. Doncic pulls up, three-pointer, bang, bang, it's good, Doncic wins the game at the buzzer. I don't know why, but I always thought that Luka hit that shot over Paul George for some reason. I mean, I'm sure I knew that it was Reggie Jackson he hit that shot over when it initially happened, but over time, I began to remember it differently. Maybe it's the fact that Paul George literally has a reputation of having game winners hit on him, and the fact that Devin Booker's game winner that was hit on him also took place in the bubble probably just made me assume that Luka was one of them, given the fact that it was against the Clippers. I'm very well aware that I could be alone on this one, but feel free to let me know if you're in the same boat as I am regarding this play. I don't know if you've noticed or even care, but there are still some people out there that just assume that Kobe swapped jerseys with multiple players during his farewell tour. I mean, you would think his opponents desperately tried to get their hands on the Legends jersey, but Kobe was more of a shoe type of guy. He was seen giving away his shoes to players, like LeBron, Paul George, and KD, just to name a few. But interestingly, was never seen swapping jerseys with anyone. Yeah, players Players like Dame and Steph had him sign their jerseys, but that's about it, no swapping whatsoever. I think what happened was, people just thought it was a given, you know, considering D-Wade did it and all, but I think that's where the confusion is coming from. So contrary to popular belief, Kobe never took part in such activity, unless you want to count the time he did it with former soccer player Thierry Henry, but other than that you get my point. So comment down below some NBA moments that you could have swore happened differently. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.